from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with coverage of KubeCon and CloudNativeCon North America 2020, virtual. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and ecosystem partners. Hi everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of KubeCon, Cloud Native Con, North America 2020. Normally theCUBE is in person, but like the EU event, this is going to be a remote virtual event. This is theCUBE virtual. We are theCUBE virtual. This is a keynote and show review with our analysts and hosts, Lisa Martin, Yo Pishkar, and myself. Guys, welcome to the program. Lisa, great to see you. Yoop, great to see you uh, remotely. Thanks for coming on. Always great to be a part of the Cube and the Cube Virtual. It's keeping yeah. us connected. So KubeCon, Cloud Native Con, it's November. And I remember in 2016, the first KubeCon, that's when Hillary Clinton got defeated by Trump. And now this year, the elections passed this time and uh, uh, Biden's a winner. So, you know, election, more good vibes this year in the community because everyone was kind of sad last time. So if you remember the first KubeCon, it was in Seattle during that time. So that was important to kind of reminisce on that. The other thing I want to bring up to you guys is the somber news of the passing of Dan uh, Kahn, uh, who was the executive director of the CNCF. He passed um, a few weeks ago at his home. It was an illness and a uh, great legend. So we want to call that out and, and say our our thoughts and prayers go with the family's condolences to his wife and, and kids. So I want to say, Dan, Godspeed. Uh, funny Dan story, um, Lisa Yopi said, I always, always pronounce his name wrong on the queue. He's like, John, it's Con, not Cone. I'm like, okay, all right, Dan, good to see you, sorry. Um, but a great guy, friend to everyone, and a super great human being, so rest in peace. Okay, KubeCon. I think the big thing this year, I want to get your thoughts. You know, start with you, CNCF, what are they up to? Obviously remote, it's been a terrible year uh, with the pandemic and all the disruptions um, and change. Your thoughts on where they are now this year. So, you know, it, it's funny, even though it's remote, even though reaching people, it's become harder. Uh, you know, we all have to deal with this from our, you know, our living room, our office uh, at home. Uh, but still the CNCF is, is doing what it's been doing for a little while now. So instead of focusing on the technology part of our RC world, they are focusing on you know, the community side of it. So they're fighting for inclusivity, they're fighting for uh, diversity, for resilience in terms of their community. And they are really working on making the open source community um, more accessible, uh, both for end user companies, uh, as well as software developers to enter the space, um, have their contribution, and you know, make sure that everyone uh, can reap full benefits of these open source products. You know, we talked to Priyanka Sharma and Stephen Augustus, and this was a big um, theme. There's, there's, been, there's been a lot of engagement online, obviously even though they have a remote platform, some people are thrilled with it, some aren't. No one's ever happy these days, it's on the web, it's always difficult. But the community's been activated and a lot more diversity. I covered the big story around, you know, master, slave, the terminology now is going to go main, you know, terminology and how that's going to be safer. Also for diversity, STEM, women in tech. This has been a big theme. I'd love to get your thoughts on that because I think that's been a very positive thing. Uh, Lisa, you and I have been talking about this for years on theCUBE around this diversity piece. What's your thoughts as well? I'd like to get both your reactions on, on where this direction is going. Yeah, you know, I think there's a number of things that have been catalyzed this year by the challenges that we've been through and the diversity push into the spotlight. Again, th the spotlight is different and it's really causing change for good. I think it's opening people's minds and perspectives as is I think this entire time, you know, it's for events like KubeCon and all the other events that we are normally getting a lot of airline miles for John and you, we're, we're not getting, we're sitting at home with our in-home studios, but at the same time, the, the engagement is increasing at every event. So I imagine that the, the great KubeCon and Cloud Native community that Dan Cohn has built is only getting bigger and stronger, even though folks are physically separated. That's been just been my observation and something I felt from every show I've covered, every interview I've done, that diversity is being raised now to a visibility level that we haven't seen in terms of it catalyzing action. You have your reaction to, to that. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And I, I want to add to that where, you know, just like Lisa said, you know, we used to fly to these events. We were pri privileged and lucky to, to be there to have that opportunity, um, but 
because everything is now digital and virtual, it opens the community up to so many other people who, for whatever reason, weren't able to join in person, but are able to join uh, virtually and digitally. So I think, you know, even though there's a lot of downsides to to this pandemic, this is one of the, you know, the the small nuggets of uh, of seeing the CNCF community opening up to a broader audience. Yeah, and that's a great point. You know, we aren't getting the airline miles. We're getting certainly the Zoom and the Cube mileage remote, Lisa, because what's interesting you're saying is, is that, you know, we're getting more action with him coming in, doing some more hosting yourself, um, Ali Amagasu as well, others, but we can get people more because remember the people aren't, oh, we're not traveling, but so aren't other people that were coming, the big names, but also these fresh voices, the new names, names we don't know yet. And I think that's what we're seeing with the remote interviews is that it's one click away from being on the Cube now. So Cube Virtual is 24 7, 365, and we're going to continue to do that. I think this is going to change the makeup of the engagement and the conversation uh, because you're going to have more participation that's going to be highly accelerated, but also these new voices are going to bring a positive change. It might upset the hierarchy a little bit in the working groups at the top, you, but you know, they're open. I mean, I talked with Stephen Augustus. He's totally cool with this. Chris Anacek is the same way. He's like, hey, bring on more people. This is the, this yeah. is the vibe of, this, of the Linux Foundation. It's always been. It's always been that way. And I, I, you know, going back to, to the early open source events in Europe that I went to, uh, I started doing that as a teenager uh, 15 years ago. And the vibe you know, hasn't necessarily changed. The makeup of the audience certainly has changed, right? From it being dominated by white males it's, it's totally opened up. And, you know, if we see that happening with the CNCF now as well, I think that's for, you know, for the better. I think um, our community, the IT community and the open source community need that resilience, need all of those different perspectives from all of, you know, different kinds of people from different walks of life with di different histories. And I think that only makes the community stronger and more viable in the long yeah. run. Uh, and I think I that's, that's that what open source needs. Sorry, it's that thought and diversity that I think we're seeing even more now. And again, just my perspective is just that the light that this challenging time is shining on exposing things that are really opportunities. And it's, I think it's imperative to look at it in that way, but that thought diversity just opens up so many more opportunities that folks that are maybe a little bit more tunnel visioned aren't thinking of, but for businesses to, and, and people to thrive and move forward and learn from this, we need to be able to, to take into consideration yeah. other concepts, other perspectives as we learn and grow. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, you know, I was giving a, uh, um, a shout out to Dan Kahn and when I heard the news, I put a clip, one of my favorite clips of the interviews was re really me kind of congratulating him on the success of CNCF. I think it was like two years ago or maybe last year, I forget. Um, but I was a critic of it initially and I was publicly on the record on theCUBE, Lisa, you remember, uh, with Stu, who's now having a great new career uh, at Red Hat. Stu and I were arguing and I was saying, Stu, I think this is going to fail because if CNCF doesn't balance the end user piece with the logos that were coming, because remember you, about four years ago, it was like a NASCAR logo farm. It's like, you know, it's like, you know, everything was like sponsored by Google this and then Amazon came in. You look at the uh, sponsor list, it was like, it's the who's who in cloud and now cloud native. It was the industry. The entire industry was like stacked up against reInvent. This is before Amazon made their move. I mean, uh, Azure made their move before Google Cloud kind of got their footing. So it was essentially KubeCon against AWS. And I said, that's going to fail. And I had to eat my words and I did, it was like, rightfully so. But they balanced the balance between end user projects and vendor was very successful. And this still plays out today. Lisa, this is important now because you said pandemic the ecosystem still needs to thrive, but there's no face-to-face -face anymore. What's yes. the challenge? What's the opportunity there? I want to put you on the spot. Sure, no, I think I think it's, it's both challenging and opportunistic. I tend to look at it more uh, from an opportunistic view. I think that it forced a lot of us, even people like myself who worked from home a lot before when I wasn't traveling for my marketing company or the Cube, you can really have very personal interactions with people on Zoom. And I've found that it's connecting people in a, in a deeper way than you even would get in the office. That's something that I actually really appreciate how it has been an opportunity to really kind of expand relationships or 
for, to open new doors that wouldn't be there if we were able to be sitting together physically in person. And it's obviously changing, you know, all the vendors that we work with. It's very different to engage an audience when you are only on camera. And it's something that, as we know, as we work with folks who haven't done it before, that's one of the things that I think a lot of the C-suite I talk to misses is that opportunity to, you know, be on a stage and, and be able to share your body language and your energy with your customers and your partners and your employees. But I actually do think that there is a, what we're doing through Zoom and, and all these virtual platforms like the Cube Virtual as well is we're opening up doors yeah. for, for in a more intimate way that I think the conversations are more authentic. You know, people are have like three-year-olds as coworkers and they're running in the room and they're screaming behind that. That's how things are today. We're learning to work with that, but we're also seeing people in a more human way. Cities, containers, mainstream and shifting left. The role of security this year, what's your take? So, I mean, uh, if we're talking about security and nothing else, uh, I think we're at a point where, you know, the CNCF has become mainstream. It's most popular products have become mainstream. Um, because if we're talking about security, there's, you know, not a lot left. And I say that with, you know, a little bit of sarcasm. Uh, I don't mean to offend anyone, but if I did, uh, I do apologize. But you know, security, even though it is super important, um, again, it means that we have, you know, moved on from talking about Kubernetes and, and container management, or we've moved on from storage. Um, it means that the technology part of the CNCF, like the hard work, has you know been done for eighty percent. But we're now into the twenty percent where we're kind of you know uh, dotting the eyes and and making sure that we cover all of the bases. And so one of the new uh, sandbox sandbox projects that has been accepted, uh, I think today even, uh, is cert manager to um, to manage certificates, uh, you know, at scale um, in an automated fashion. And I think that's, you know, one one prime example of how security is becoming the theme and, and kind of the conversation at KubeCon this year, where, you know, we're again seeing that maturity come into play with even with the sandbox projects uh, now being able to help customers and help end users with, you know, certificates, which is, you know, in, in the, the macro picture, a very specific, a very niche thing to be able to solve with open source software. Mm -hmm. But for every company, this is one of those vital, you know, kind of boilerplate security measures so that the, um, the, the customer and all of their infrastructure remains safe. I think you, what you're kind of really uh, articulating there is the evolution of uh, CNCF, uh, I, much to John's surprise, as you said, you thought in the very beginning that this wasn't going to take off. It has clearly Dan Cohn's left a great legacy there, but we're seeing the evolution of that. I do though, John, want to ask you, cause you did a lot of the interviews here. Mm -hmm. We've been talking for what, nine months now on the Cube Virtual about mm -hmm. the acceleration of, of transformation of every business to go from that. Okay, how do we do this yeah. work in this, in this weird environment, keep the lights on. How do we actually be successful and actually become a thriving business as things go forward. What are some of the things that you heard from the guests regarding COVID as an accelerator? Well, I think, I think one, well, a couple of things, good, good question. I think it ranges, right? So the new, they had some news that they're trying to announce, obviously new survey um, certifications, K8 security certification, new, th new tech radar support diversity stats, you know, the normal stuff they do at the event, they got to get the word out. So, you know, that was one theme I heard, but on the overall uh, macro trend, you know, we saw the, the COVID impact and no one's afraid of it there. I mean, I think, you know, part of the legacy of these tech communities is, they've been online, they're, they're used to being online. So it's not a new thing. So I, I don't think that the work environment has been that much of a disruption to the people in the in the core community. Linux Foundation, for instance, had a great chat with Chris Anisik on this. He's the CTO, he's been the COO, variety of senior roles. Um, in fact, they're, they're creating a template around CNCF and they, they're announced the um, Fin, um, FinOps Foundation, uh, J.R. Stormet um, is the executive director that's part of Linux Foundation. So it's a practitioner community. So I think um, teasing out the conversation is you're going to see a template model of the CNCF where you're going to see how groups work together. And I think what COVID has definitely shown and some of the things that you guys were saying around how people are going to be more engaged, more diversity, more access. I think you're going to start to see new social constructs emerge around distinct user groups. And I think this 
FinOps Foundation is a tell sign around how groups of people are going to start together, whether they're CUBE hosts coming together um, and CUBE fans and CUBE uh, uh, alumni. I mean, I mean, think about the alumni that have been on the CUBE, uh, Lisa. You know, Tim Hopkins, Sarah Novotny, Kelsey Hightower, um, Dan Burns, Craig McLucky. I mean, we've had everybody on that's now uh, captain of the industry. So, um, and the, you know, we had uh, Capital One, we've had, uh, you know, uh, lift on. I mean, it's becoming a really tight knit community. Everyone knows each other. And I think now they realize that they have a lot of uh, power to infect change. And so when you're trying to uh, affect change, um, that's a good thing and people are pumped about it. So I think the big focus was um, CNCF is successful. Um, again, it's, there's, a, there's a somber note around Dan Collins passing, but I think he had already moved on to a new position. So he was he already passed the baton to management, but he did leave a mark. But I think there's Priyanka Sharma, she's doing a great job. People are upbeat. And I think the theme is Kubernetes, it happened, it went next level, then it's going next level again. And I think that's kind of what people really aren't saying is kind of the public secret, which is, okay, this thing's going mainstream. Now you're going to start to see it in, in, in commercial deployments. You're going to start to see it scale into organizations. And that's not the cool kids or the emerging DevOps crowd, that's IT. Right? So you know, you know it's going to happen. It's like, hey, you know, I'm an IT guy or, or a developer. What is this? It has to work well. That's the big thing I think people weren't talking about. That's the most important story. I think another element too of that, John, is the cultural shift. You know, we were talking, when we talk about DevOps, we always think about speed. And I talked to some folks who said, you know, it's it has to be the IT cultures and the business cultures coming together in a meaningful way to collaborate in a very new way. Thankfully, we have the technology to enable us to collaborate. But I think that's been another uh, underlying theme that, that I've heard a lot through the recent times is that that facilitator of of cultural change, which is always hard to do. And there's a bit of a catalyst here for organizations to not just keep the lights on, but to be successful going forward and, and, and find new ways of delighting their customers. Well, we'll get the final word. I just want to say my big takeaway to the show is, and we'll go down the line, I'll start Lisa, then you hope you can go, is the usage of cloud and multi-cloud is here. Everyone sees that. Uh, I think there's a financial aspect going on whether it's when security you're going to be tied in. I think you're going to see new sets of services come in built on the foundation of the CNCF, but cloud and multi-cloud is here. Multi-cloud meaning edge as well. That is definitely on everyone's radar. That was a big theme throughout the interview. So we'll see more of that. Um, Lisa, your takeaways. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I think one of the biggest things that I hear consistently is the opportunities that have been uncovered, the, the collaboration becoming tighter and folks having the opportunity to engage more with events like KubeCon and CNCF because of this virtual shift. I think there's only a lot of positive things that we're going to see to come. Yep. Yeah, my point of view is, I mean, open source is validated completely, right? It, it's a viable model to build around software on the one hand, on the other hand, the CNCF's role in making that open source community broadly accessible and inclusive is I think the biggest win to uh, to look back at, at the last year. Well, I'm super excited for moving on to the next event. It's been a great pleasure. Lisa, you, you guys are great co-hosts, Virtual Cube. Thanks for participating and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Okay, this is theCUBE's coverage of KubeCon 2020, Cloud Native Con Virtual. This is theCUBE Virtual. We are theCUBE Virtual. Thanks for watching.